All right, come on. Yeah. Wow, do you look good today? So do you. Jesus. What about Jerome? We got Jerome on the camera too. Jerome, can Jerome, are you on? Can they see you? Yes, they can see me. Hello, everybody. Hello, good morning, everybody. What you're looking at is the Fickla Media team. You, it is official. This is what we look like. JJ, Rome, RJ, and myself. I can hear that. Oh, yeah. my bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a delay. Yeah. Everybody, welcome to our 19th podcast. Today, we're going to be discussing business. So we'll throw a little bit of fitness in there, but we wanted to have a conversation. As you can see, we've created this podcast. We have sponsors. They've been gracious enough to help us along while we navigate through these waters. And uh, what we want to do is we want to show you a way that you can market your business using our resources. So, RJ... Off yes. camera, you told me that you have uh, five elements of business. Okay, let's and, start there. And before you get started, what I want to do is throw a little sunshine at you. Okay. I can honestly tell you, I've been in my own business now for 25 years, and uh, it wasn't until after I started working here, becoming a coach here, and uh, pretty much allowing you to mentor me that I've really grown my business as well as my brand. So I, I appreciate that. And I, uh, I would speak very highly of you no matter what, Thank regardless you. of uh, if you and I were sitting at this table or not. So why don't you share with everybody the five elements of business and then we can discuss it moving forward. Well, the first thing I remember when we first met, I was asking you, why are you doing all the work, right? Like mm -hmm. you were the one that you had these press off and you're just like, well, quality and this and that. I was like, you can hire somebody for half the price of what you're doing. It Like you're worth way more than what you're doing now. And it's not to say that that's not the key element but there's other elements in your business that you could be focusing, such as marketing and sales and brand mm -hmm. awareness, mm -hmm. instead of spending eight hours behind a sewing machine. Yeah, <laughs> if that's Embro what embroidery, embroidery machine. machine. That's what my grandma yeah. calls it. And within, <laughs> and within, uh, I don't ham pants. Uh, <laughs> just so you know, don't ever ask me to do that. I think within <laughs> two months you were off. You were off the uh, the embroidery, and I seen that change, and you just kind of did it stealthy. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Well, you're. You're right. Sorry to cut you off there, but yeah. you're right. But because my strength is sales and, yeah. and uh, marketing. Actually, well, I shouldn't say marketing. It's sales. It's relationship building, mm -hmm. and uh, it's which is key. It's connections, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. I have a lot of people who do different things. So that's my strong suit. Sitting mm -hmm. behind an embroidery for uh, embroidery machine for 17 years. <laughs> yes, my I, at that 10 years ago or yeah. seven years ago it made sense. Yeah. After that, I should have finish out a long time ago so <laughs> anyways you're right so that's that's exactly what it is when when you come to business there there are five elements of the business and a, a lot of people that i talk to they just have no no clue recently i sat down with a guy because i did this study i said okay if i wasn't doing this what would i be good at and i took this like 30 minute test where it was asking you personal questions business questions life questions et cetera, et cetera, and it said something like a business consultant is mm -hmm. where i'm suited it's like well that's what i do mm -hmm. right and so when i talk to these business owners especially like the, the the guys that have been in their industry for 20 plus years right so i'm talking about guys that are in their 50s maybe even 60s okay and I ask them, okay, so let's just start with the bare bones. Where, what's your lead source? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so that's the first element of of business is what is your lead source? Because if you have a great coffee or you have a great edible arrangement, and you have no leads to come and try your product, then your business is dead. Yeah, right. And so I always ask, what is what is your what is your your like? Where do you get your leads from? And ninety percent of these guys that I talk to, they say it's word of mouth. Word of mouth, yeah. And I remember living off word of mouth, and it was difficult because even with the word of mouth, you still have to create the nurturing process, which mm -hmm. is number two. So if Rick, if you, if I say, okay, Rick is a customer of mine. Hey, Rick, can you uh, like, hey, RJ, I got like this buddy, and he wants to come and work out. I'm like, okay, awesome, Rick. And that's it. Yep. Right. And that's how it ends. Yeah. Right. So then you would pray that 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 Rick would bring that person in. But no, I'm like, hey, Rick, uh, you can either one of two things. Rick, would you mind bringing that person in for a workout? Mm -hmm. Can you do this tomorrow? Right. You have to you have to close that loop. Mm -hmm. Or number two, you just say, hey, Rick, and this is what I do. People always ask me, do you have a business card? And I said, no, I don't. But what's your Instagram name? Mm -hmm. Right. That's yeah. my business card. Follow my business account. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to get what is your email, Rick? What is your phone number? Okay, I'm going to call you within 24 hours, and we're going to set you up for a workout in 48 hours. Yeah. 
And so that's like a nurturing process. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't have a nurturing process. Everything that they do is off the cuff, yeah. right? So I'm all about repeatable systems. And yesterday I said I got a business boner from, from the girls because they <laughs> created a loop system, right? Yeah. It's like, and yesterday I'm still working on the sales process because this is a new business world that we're in. Mm -hmm. And I got to sit down and strap in because it could take 60 days yep. before things go up and running. And I'm not trying to scare anybody. And I think it's I'm a just, realistic my, point. Yep. My mindset yep. is 60 days. I don't think about today. Mm -hmm. I, I live today, but I'm still thinking mm -hmm. ahead. And that's what's got me to my, to my accelerated business is yep. that people think, you know, like, well, I've been in business for, for, very, for a long time now, but I feel like I'm well ahead, mm -hmm. right? Like I feel like I'm a 50 year old. Yeah. in business. Yeah. But I learn like I'm a 13 year. I just finished a a book like this morning. I was super proud of myself. I'm like, boom, just did it just did another book, right? Yeah. That's just like that's like learning a new skill as a as a martial artist. Mm -hmm. So, number 1, you need to have a repeatable lead generation source, and I always tell people you got to have multiple fishing poles. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, what we do here at Fit Club Media is we provide you with traditional marketing. So, what you see behind us right here, 50% of the businesses won't have this. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've done these. We created them all. We've yep. cre have we created all these? Uh, Most. E except for uh, Old Senator Jones yeah. and the Mountain Bean. Yeah. We've done all the rest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 Anyways, so a uh, little inside joke. Um, I'm, I'm lost. Yeah. Anyways, Actually, let me ask you a question. Okay, yes. while, while you're getting your uh, back to on track here, the business card. You made a good point there. Mm -hmm. How is it that we rely so heavily on the business card? I feel like that's the most antiquated way of doing business, and I feel yep. like people put too much uh, emphasis or too much value yeah. on the transfer of the business <laughs> yeah. card. You well, know, nowadays you can get a business card from Vistaprint for ten bucks, right? Like and, and five hundred for for ten bucks. And that's, but what does it tell you? It tell, just it, tells you how to contact. But yeah. you're right. If you have an Instagram, and yeah. this is one of the things that we're going to get into as to why every business should be on social media, regardless yeah. of where you're at with yeah. it. Is I can immediately look at your products, your services, yeah. your story. I, immediately within yeah. 10 seconds, I can get to know who you are. Yeah. Your business card is going to tell me how to phone you, email <laughs> yeah. you, or check out your website. Yeah. That's right. And I'm not <laughs> probably going to go to your website. No. The first thing you're going to do is check out someone's Instagram, Instagram or, or Facebook. Or Facebook page. Yeah. And so that's what we provide here at Fit Club is that we're, we're, we're getting you with the traditional marketing is that you want to have a banner that you'd be proud of. Right? That's number one. Like, of course. This one right here, Jen, we made this one. Yeah. And this it's one awesome. is phenomenal yeah. like this would look like s corporate paid a person a hundred grand to develop this yeah, you bet do you know what i mean yep. and that's where we come in is that what most people would pay have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. like i i remember talking to this other guy in in a different in a similar business and he writes he does marketing campaigns mm -hmm. for for and so he put together a just like a a five minute uh video for a um for like a bank or whatever and they paid him 10k you, you know what I mean? Like they pay, we do that, yeah. right? We charge our, so what do we charge? We charge, what do we charge for a video? Jerome, let's put Jerome on the camera. Jerome, what, oh. would, a, what, would, a, what would a phenomenal video cost somebody in the traditional world? So just the video, just like you go and shoot it and edit it and you send it back to them. All right, well for the corporate shoots, right? Um, that will be that will cost them about six to ten grand for yes. just a video alone. That's just a video. Now, what about coming up with content? Like, well, yeah, those are the writers and our content and stuff like that. That's right. another person that you have to pay. Uh, yes. So, so video editing, right? Shooting, editing. Yeah. Then you have to even before that you have to have content. We do. Right. Yeah. So you need a content writer. That's where you come in. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you need a copywriter. Correct. So somebody comes up with the theme. Mm -hmm. Then. Somebody has to go and shoot it. Somebody has to direct these individuals, mm -hmm. right? Why is it that James Cameron and why are these guys making more money than the actors and actresses? Yep. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Because they're the ones that are in charge of that. Mm -hmm. Those guys are the ones that are coming up with the content, doing the directing, right? And so then you have to come up with the copy. So if you don't know what copy is, what is the verbiage? What yeah. is the words? What is the description? And so you have to tie those elements. And then from there, so that's three pieces. Those are three individuals that yeah. you would have to pay. There's also another one too, the, the, the pre, before you do anything. So yeah. when we're shooting a, a video, I'll yeah. go in first. Like So I'll go to the brick and mortar. Right. I'll go and I have a sit down with them mm -hmm. and find out the direction that they want to go i'll sort of put something together mm -hmm. with respect to where we're going to shoot because jerome just doesn't roll in and <laughs> shoot everything yeah. right we he we have to tell him you're going as soon as you walk in yeah. you're going to shoot this product mm -hmm. you're going to shoot this particular area mm -hmm. the transition what's next and, yeah. and you got to create that storyboard right yeah. so you have that first then mm -hmm. you have your three that you're talking yeah. about now that 
that person who does the storyboard might also be the person who does the directing mm-hmm. and gets the involvement of the staff or, yeah. or whatever the video. Well, no, but is here's the thing: be, right? the difference between us and a like a Titanic video is that mm-hmm. they've got an individual for everything. Yeah, absolutely. So you're basically one person that's taking on five different roles. Mm-hmm. Jerome is one person that's taking on five different roles, mm-hmm. and I'm one business that gets the the distribution. And that's the other thing is that like so you come up with your content. You put this video together, you do a write-up for it, then you have to distribute it. Yeah, who's looking at it? Where do you put it? Right. right. And so like a lot of people are like, well, we'll just start our own Instagram account with their 100 followers mm-hmm. or their 10 followers <laughs> that they got. Yep. So it's like you got, and then of your 10, you might get 10 people or 100, you might get 10 people that actually look at your stuff. Yeah. And then I've seen, I've seen people's businesses accounts and I follow like businesses and... The, the, there's no like the the photo is not relevant to what you're trying to say. Yeah. So if you like if you're on Instagram, you have to you have to have an image that is cap captivating right away, mm-hmm. right? Because it got, with Instagram, the words is the number one thing. Then you have to have a short caption. Okay, so above the cuff is what I call it. So what is above the cuff is important because that means that people are going to see more to read more. Right, mm-hmm. and then how do you draw in external audiences? So for so for instance, hashtags. What's a hashtag, business owners? <laughs> okay, so hashtags, right? I think most know what they are. They just don't use them yeah, effectively exactly. as all. What's yeah. a hashtag? Yeah. So so that you got to put a hashtag, and what they do is they draw in outside audiences. Yeah. Right, and the hashtags have to be relevant, and they have to be short. They have to be sweet. They have mm-hmm. to be something that people are looking for, and so that's a lot of elements that. A lot of business owners don't understand. Yeah. Right? And the other thing too is you have to keep posting. You can shoot yes. a great video. We can shoot you a killer video, mm-hmm. but if you're not following it up with support, let's mm-hmm. say let's just Instagram for example. Yeah. Shooting stories. Yeah. Right. You got to keep people engaged. You always got to have. You always have to have a story. Your circle should always have a little thing around it, meaning that you have a story to mm-hmm. uh, to let to let people see to drive them to your Instagram page mm-hmm. where they can see your actual mm-hmm. posts. Or the videos that we do. So, mm-hmm. anyways, that's something that we can also show you how to do. And I can yeah. tell you this personal experience: the second that I really started to up my Instagram game for mm-hmm. CSP embroidery, my business was almost two times. Mm-hmm. And that's been a tr- slow transition mm-hmm. since 2016, uh, 17, mm-hmm. for, with uh, CSP. 2016 was my personal Instagram, but it's crazy how much how many people are are buying and who are influenced off of their social media. So, in my opinion, if you're still doing, uh, say, let's say direct mail. Or even mm-hmm. e-blasts. I mean, e-blasts mm-hmm. are still effective, but mm-hmm. y- you have to have a social media game. It's just too Somewhere. important not to. And it's Somewhere. free. It's yeah. free. You know what I mean? Like, you should never not use that. It's free. Yeah. So anyways, continue on. Where are we at with your uh, lead, five elements? So lead nurture. Okay, so you always have want to have multiple fishing poles. So number one, what is your lead generation source? So yes, word of mouth is one of them. It should mm-hmm. be 50% of what you do should be based around referral bases. Number two is that there should, you should have an online, offline, and internal lead source Mm -hmm. okay so online presence means like on facebook on youtube on instagram on kijiji on whatever Mm -hmm. you just gotta if you the more you can hit the better Mm -hmm. right then you have your offline marketing so that's like your face to face so you're uh, an offline specialist is Mm -hmm. what i would call you Mm -hmm. and you would go to people's businesses you would um, sit at a booth right like if i was one of these businesses i wouldn't pay my employees to go there i would pay somebody like you to go there right like so good example and we're, we're kind of like running around circles here but i was at a an event that we got into so there was us there was some other businesses that had their people their thing set up mm-hmm. and then there was like a competitor okay and when i say competitor that i don't compete with them because these guys are making billions of dollars mm-hmm. okay i'm not going to say what brand they were so I went over to the booth, right? We're in the same industry, fitness industry, and I started talking to girls like, hey, so which, um, which location do you guys work at? Oh, we don't work for them. We just, we're just a for hire. And I'm looking at the girls, and they definitely don't live a fit life. They're sitting there like, you know, eating chocolate and just like not live like they're not representing the brand yeah. the way that it should be. We had a discussion today. Just about, two like, bodies just filling up space. Just two bodies filling up space, taking yeah. like entries. And I'm like, man, I would never do that. doesn't matter how big I get. Mm-hmm. I would want to make sure the people I'm sending, there's a purpose behind what I'm doing. Yeah. And so that's that's old school, right? Or not old school, but traditional. So, like, you got to be – we do events every month. Like, mm-hmm. that was part of our calendars. Like, we send Michelle to one event a month, 
right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we started getting into bigger and bigger. Like you start s small, right? Like little recreational centers. And then we worked our way all the way up to like getting into the wedding show. Yep. And now most of these vendors or most of these events started like giving us stuff to be there, mm -hmm. which is what, because we bring a level of excitement that nobody else does. Yeah, we bring a show there too. We bring the show. Yeah. So then, and then you have your internal, so there should be some type of internal, that's why we have a, a sponsorship, mm -hmm. right? Like usually some type of value of a thousand dollars. So, and we always try to give back our sponsors 10x that, mm -hmm. right? So we had a, a sponsor that signed up recently, so Synoptic, and they, within a month, they already had a furnace and <laughs> And hot water tank business. Yeah, I don't even think it took that long. I think it was yeah. within like a week or within 10 Within a days. week, yeah. right? I hired them for something right away. And the, the thing about what the businesses that we work with, right? We don't work with every single business. We, let, we bring them on. So we, we won't really say no unless it's super conflicting or you, we've already got something in the similar industry. But we make sure that the people that come in here are vetted. Right, and we want to make sure that the product that they're offering is good. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that the person that's offering the product is good, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that they have some type of follow through. Because if we're sending clients, so our clients believe and trust in us, mm -hmm. and so if we're sending our clients directly to you, we expect a level of professionalism, or you better deep discount that. Yeah. Right. So there's cl there's places that don't discount, and but w their product is up there. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what are you getting when we tell you to go see Olafson and Jones? Well, you're going to get top-notch service mm -hmm. they're going to take care of you you don't have to worry about yeah, it and we say that with full confidence we say that with full confidence <clears throat> every, that every every banner that you see behind us like i said has been a, a vetted business we know their capabilities we know their track record um but in addition to that you know they're part of our fit fam right yeah and we want to make sure that we're uh, supporting those who support us and if you have a business that's kind of what uh, we'll say it's an underlying thing that we try to do here mm -hmm. so in addition to all the things that we can create for your business yeah uh, not necessarily ideally, but we do want you to be part of this, mm -hmm. uh, a part of our Fit Fam, and of course, we're always trying to bring it together with fitness, right? Mm -hmm. Not saying that you have to be a member, not saying that you have to be into mm -hmm. fitness to be to work with us, but you you probably will be by yeah. the time you're done and we, working. And we with motivate us, you, know? you, we get you, we get you uncomfortable because yeah. you know there's some businesses where we're trying to reach out to them right now. We're not going to like mention names, but they're very like we're COVID hundred percent, not mm -hmm. marketing, not spending money, not doing this and that. I'm like, yeah. but this is the perfect time because this is a perfect time. We should talk about why why is it a perfect time for everybody to be throwing as even if you have to. I feel personally that even if you have to borrow money to do your marketing <laughs> yeah. right now, the reason being is because the return on investment is massive mm -hmm. because everybody is looking it's at online. their phones. And yeah. not necessarily that they weren't before, yeah. but now everybody's doing it for, instead of maybe three hours, they're doing it for 12 hours. Yeah. You know, because I yeah. mean, if you're not working, what are you doing? You're watching TV, you're or looking you're at your phone. phone. Yeah. You can't go anywhere. Yeah. You know, it's not that you're being lazy, but mm -hmm. you're restricted. Mm -hmm. So you have, and of course, everybody's paying attention. They mm -hmm. want to know what the latest news is. Mm -hmm. And this is how you get your business name out there. Yeah. So if there's ever a time when mm -hmm. you want to start spending a little bit of marketing money, mm -hmm. and we will give you so much return on your value for a very inexpensive mm -hmm. price. So as you're watching this um, podcast right now, you're going to notice that there's banners across the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. Very effective way. Mm -hmm. And in fact, let me give you a few numbers real quick just so you know. So mm -hmm. we have a podcast, our workout, daily workout video, and then Neri's Kitchen, which is a, a super popular video. Yep. So on average, as of today, our reach is 6,000 people and our views is 3,000. So Wait, that, that's one video? That's one video? No, that's say. between all three. So between all three right now on a daily basis. Oh, reaches, that's on average. On average. Okay, on yeah. Average, so yeah. it could be more. could be less. But, I mean, having said that, too, all of our videos have grown in traction. Like, this mm -hmm. is our 19th podcast, mm -hmm. and each and every one of them, I think, for the exception of one, has mm -hmm. grown incrementally, mm -hmm. right? So, and that's just, that is just what we're doing uh, with respect to those three videos. Mm -hmm. You also have a huge social media presence, which between the two, Instagram and Facebook, mm -hmm. is just under 30,000 people who mm -hmm. follow you. So... We have a market that we can tap into for you almost immediately. You don't have mm -hmm. to build up the social media. You don't yep. have to build up your, your brand awareness. Mm -hmm. We just put it out there for mm -hmm. you. You know. So anyways, where are you at with respect to your five um, Well, and I think that this, that's what we're able to do is that, A, you're working with two local guys, mm -hmm. right? Two guys that are highly – or three. Three. Jerome's yeah. always behind the camera. Yeah. Anyways. I'm uh, always behind the camera. Yeah. Obviously. But He's he does. He makes it happen. The most we, important guy. We come up with the ideas. <laughs> we've developed a structure, and Jerome, he's the glue, right? Yeah. We're the bricks. Without the bricks or without the glue and without the bricks, there's no house. So yeah. that's that's basically what it is. That's right. And um, 
And so, like, you get you get to work directly with two guys and highly influential guys, and everybody under- knows who we are. Mm-hmm. We're very transparent with what we do. So, um, and what we can do for businesses is that we take a lot of this element off, is off their plate, because then a lot of people that are in their business, they just want to do whatever it is they do. So if they just want to crunch numbers, mm-hmm. then go and crunch numbers. If this person wants to just build beautiful bouquets, yeah. then run beautiful bouquets, right? Yeah. Like, I personally... I have somebody that runs our ads. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because of the fact that I like to be a director, right? Like I like to be the the head coach Mm -hmm. that has assistant coaches, that has players, right? Like there's, and I understand, I just, you know, you guys tell me what it is. I'm gonna ask you three or four questions and then we're gonna work through this together because you're gonna get my influence with it. But ultimately the way I see things is we've got to get it into your voice Mm -hmm. because if you're the one delivering it, then it has to be from you. Yeah. And so what we do for business owners, we take this element off their plate because I doubt anybody, you know, after 20 years or 30 years of being in the business, they mm-hmm. want to learn something new. Yeah. Right. Or Which, much less spend time that takes traction. Yeah. Yeah. Which I feel like they they really should. I feel like yeah. this this is the opportunity where and I'll speak from example, because at the end of the day, I'm 44 years old and people would consider most 40 year olds getting into that dinosaur age right like for whatever reason i've talked about this a million times Mm -hmm. and there's no limit as to how young you need to be to be on social media there absolutely isn't and (laughs) i feel like everybody should be and i'll give you an example using my own mother okay okay so she's 60 something years old and she walks dogs for a living and then takes care of people's property so she's a she's a pet sitter she's a home sitter and then she's kind of a people sitter Mm -hmm. so she looks after this lady that has multiple sclerosis so she's kind of this nurturer of of everything and I always said, Mom, why don't you put, like, just the fact that you have dogs, put yourself on social media. People love looking at dogs and just say something, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And her immediate uh, reaction is, why would anybody <laughs> care what I have to say, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's usually everybody's. Anybody that we've talked to with respect to social yeah. media, that's the first thing that they say. Yeah. And she put out some posts there and she got so much traction. She had, like, mm-hmm. hundreds of likes, like, hundreds, mm-hmm. not just 80 or, mm-hmm. or 100, but hundreds. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and now she's like a social media star. Yeah. You know, she loves it. She's taking nice pictures. Yeah. And, f- and she's always take. she'll never take a selfie. Oh, yeah. She stops people in the middle uh, of the park to always nice. take a picture of That's her. That's good. <laughs> that's good. That's taking it to, well, she's a former real estate agent. So she understands she is, yeah. uh, the element of professionalism. And that's. And she's not shy. Like, well, she'll that's one thing people, with Jerome right? is like, you'll always get that element of professionalism. You bet. Right? I was grinding him a little bit yesterday about his texts in some of his, uh, in some of the banners. Yeah. I was like, Jerome, the video and the text, it doesn't align. Mm-hmm. Find some. Some, sign something else. <laughs> yeah, but that's all right. We're all we're always that's, kind of pushing each other to learn did. a little like bit more. We, yeah, we, we, we tweet, we educate, we yeah, educate, we, t- we, yeah, we tweet educate each, each other, and you know, we we um we learn from each other's uh, mm-hmm. uh, strengths, professionalism, strengths, strengths, and strengths. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sure. So so the one thing that um, the one thing that people got to realize too about social media is that you put it out, you try it. And then if, you know, one of two things, you either stay behind, you stand behind your, your statement, mm-hmm. right? We know there's people out there that put content out all the time, mm-hmm. but it's, it's not authentic, right? They're like reading notes or, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's not from the heart. Like you might, we're, we're, this, is, this is not anything to do with, it, yeah. <laughs> with what we're talking about today. This yeah. is something else. And you have a couple of cliff notes, but really we're just speaking from the heart, yeah. right? And when you speak from the heart, and as long as you believe and it's like behind your values, then then people will latch onto it. And if they don't, then who cares? Yeah, exactly. Because if you're in a business, they're not going to do business with. I followed, I followed, I unfollowed somebody yesterday, mm-hmm. right? And um, and she was a, a, a older old like client of mine, and I just figured, hey, she's no longer like ever going to come back, mm-hmm. right? And just over some personal stuff or whatever. So I said, you know what? then just unfollow her mm-hmm. because then I don't need to have her on here. She's not going to ever come in. We're never going to do business together, and I don't care what she's up yep, to. Yep. So now I'm narrowing what I'm focusing on. Mm-hmm. That's nothing personal against her. It's just I'm not following her. There's nothing in in the future that we're going to ever bind together again. Mm-hmm. So whatever, it's gone. And so when you put something and somebody puts something negative or they're hating on you or whatever like there's a reply or somebody puts a thumbs down don't take it personal yeah two things number one they can unfollow you and i've told people to unfollow me i said please unfollow me Mm -hmm. right number one number two i unfollow them yeah and movers you don't need they say that you can only keep track of up to like a hundred friends anyways yeah 
right? I have 4,082 friends. I checked this morning. Yeah. 4,082 friends. If I drop 100 of them, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Do, do you know what I mean? Because I'm not, we're not engaging anyways. Yeah. And, if you're, and if you're a mover and shaker on social media, a good gauge of that you're doing something right yeah. is having haters. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And getting back to your authenticity, <laughs> yeah. uh, getting back to your authenticity, yeah. authenticity. Yeah. Um, the authenticity, authenticity now <laughs> is the new fake it before you make it mentality. Yeah, it like years ago, it'd be like yeah. just fake. You'll put on a suit even yeah. if you make one dollar an hour yeah. and, and look like you're rich. Yeah. Step out of somebody else's Lambo. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But now it, it's it's too transparent. You can yeah. Google anybody. You can find out yeah. enough about them almost instantaneously. Yeah. But the reason why you want to be authentic mm. with respect to your social media is because then you're going to attract people that mm. are like you. Mm-hmm. So doing business with people yes. like you is easy, right? Yes. Because they're they're on the same <laughs> yes. mindset. They know yes. what you're doing. You're not trying to convince somebody that yeah. you're that you're a fake over here. Yeah. And they're they're trying to relate to you as a fake person. Yeah. But in real life, you have yeah. to deal with them. Yeah. You can't do it. So. If you're sore, you're sore. That, say it. We say it all the time. We we go on the camera like, no. Sure. You can see us warm it up and just try to get loose. Yeah. And uh, and when you can speak from the heart, then it gets easier. Of course. Well, yeah. and then you can connect with that person yeah. immediately. Right? I have I've had pr- professional training for three years of public speaking, and it definitely 100 percent helped. But until I found my own personal voice. Is when I mm-hmm. is when I just it got so much easier and, and just you don't need the best thing that t- I would tell anybody is just you know we got this guy that I'm trying to get on here mm-hmm. and he has a story to tell and he's like I don't know how to get my story out I'm like dude just say your story get it out there and if it's good then get better at it get better at it. saying the same story we know guys that talk about the same thing mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. who had lice who had you know uh, is not from here is a foreigner mm-hmm. right like it's the same message for the past 10 years yeah but yet there's still people that want to hear it because there's always new ears of course right when I just had this conversation with Jen yeah, yeah there's yeah. always new ears that want to hear your old story yeah and so and you only have one past <laughs> yeah. you have to tell the same story yeah. that's your story and it's hard to come up with die. new stuff it's like it, going yeah. home <laughs> and asking your wife how was your day yeah I don't know like I guess I uh, and then you start to think it's like no, sometimes you just bring up an old story, and yeah. it's like you're not living in the past, but you can, you know what I mean? Like it still brings a level of excitement. Yeah, in. but if people want to know who you are, they need to know your history, right? And people, and if you're the type of person who's out there meeting a lot of new people, your story is going to be told yeah. over and over. So that's yeah. why, baby, you just got to put some earmuffs on when I get back into <laughs> my old stories. Yeah. Oh, well, that's why this COVID's nice too, is because it's giving everybody a new pa- new chapter in their book. Mm-hmm. Right. Like what was the old chapter? Everybody kind of felt like they were the, at the end of their book. Right. This is it. This is life. I'm, you know, with the same wife. I'm going to have, you know, my kids work. Uh, you know, a lot of people now have integrated the gym, which mm-hmm. kept them excited for about mm-hmm. 12 months is about like the drop off period. Right. Mm-hmm. And then after that, they start to say, well, you know, I want to try something new. And you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. then they stop. They stop growing. They stop adding new chapters. Yeah. And so like this now brief pause in time for everybody it's not just you it's not just me it's, mm-hmm. it's the whole world bill gates the whole it's world donald trump yeah. it's you know what i mean like everybody yeah. has has had had to stop in some capacity and so this is like a new like a, a new open page and so now you get to write it like in this period of time when i reflect back on what i did in covid mm-hmm. you can you can really reflect back and say like man i really crushed that yeah you know absolutely like, yeah it's a great time to uh, reinvent yourself, come yeah. up with something new, look, look at things in a different way. Yeah. Uh, business-wise, let me give you a quick story yeah. about uh, – we'll, we'll talk about business after, after Corona. But yeah. So a buddy of mine, he owns um, – or he's a managing partner in seven Boston pizzas, two of them in Winnipeg, one over by Polo Park and one uh, south. I can't remember exactly where it is. Yeah. So we, we were talking, and I just phoned him up. I said, hey, you're a restaurateur. Give me your opinion on – how you see business foregoing in the future and what's going on right now. Just because, you know, when we have these healthy business podcasts, I want to know how different industries are dealing with this. So basically the breakdown of it is that they are shut down, obviously, to the public. His uh, his numbers are 20% of – so he's down 80%. 80% yeah. He's doing 20% of the business. The challenge is that we are all given – or anybody who is an employee goes on EI is given a $2,000 <laughs> check through Curb or SERP now, right? Ooh. 
If you are, if you're on, well, not you, because you're not get an this employee. Check. Yeah, <laughs> no, get a job, buddy. Get a job. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> so, anyways, so obviously you can imagine that most people that work in restaurants, they're working at a minimum wage and they're not doing that many hours, so their mm. checks don't equal to this two thousand. So now mm. his challenge is, mm. I can't even get people to come back to work, mm-hmm. even though we still have twenty percent of business to run. Mm. We still have to do something. Can't do it. So it's him and his salaried staff that are literally running oh, these yeah. restaurants now. So. These poor guys, they got stuck kind of in a rock and a hard place. Not yeah. only did they lose 80% of their business, but now they can't even find people to come and work in to, to yeah. fix the 20%. Yeah. And basically his words is, I'm just going to have the most giant pizza delivery pizza place in the world. <laughs> you know much. what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. And, and his Reshaping pred- his business. He's exactly. pivoting. Yeah. He's pivoting. So how does business look in the future? And, uh, you know, I always ask their predictions because I want to know what people feel. Mm-hmm. And he's a very positive dude. He's mm-hmm. not a pessimist. Yeah, he's an optimist. He's a good guy. Yeah. 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 And um, he feels that business, or we're not going to be able to go back into restaurants until July, August. Jeez. That's a long time, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So that's a ton of time. And he's not getting any rent forgiveness. Whoa. So, and I thought, you know, that's got to be crazy. Like, (laughs) that's a ton of rent. Well, yeah. He's probably 5,000 minimum square feet times 20. Minimum, for sure. Minimum rent in the city. The minimum rent for this in the city, unless you're like somewhere super industrial that nobody can find, right. is about twenty bucks a square foot plus utilities and da 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 da. So it's about thirty bucks. So you take the square footage. So everybody understands how much people are are paying mm-hmm. to be a business owner. So for instance, here we have three thousand square feet, just mm-hmm. under. We're at nine thousand dollars. So you take the square footage times that by thirty, and mm-hmm. that's about what everybody's paying. Mm-hmm. If they're not at Polo Park, that's paying two hundred and fifty per square foot. Or if you're at which is where he is, Kildone in place, yeah, yeah. Uh, where they're paying one hundred and fifty dollars a square foot. Like, you know what I mean? Like all that stuff. That's crazy. No rent relief. No, nope, oh. not yet. Not yet. Hopefully, something gets mandated for him eventually. Yeah. But so let's discuss how can Ficla Media help businesses moving into the future in, or into this post-Corona uh, era? And my personal opinion mm-hmm. is uh, obviously online. Yeah. Right, you have to have an online presence. Mm-hmm. A website isn't enough mm-hmm. anymore. No. Nope. Not only do you need to have a, a, a strong social media presence, but you need to be able to navigate your computer to do Zoom calling, mm-hmm. and you need to be able to do things like transfer pictures really quickly. Mm-hmm. Everything has to become technology-based. Mm-hmm. Not everything, but let's be honest, most things are going to happen. The only thing to. really working is the internet. That, that's it. <laughs> and you know what? Even if the government says, okay, we're done, you can go, go back to work and yeah. open doors, yeah. we still have this psychological thing in our mind now where... I don't know uh, if I want to be here in Costco to with anything. seven million people yet. Without you know a mask I mean? and gloves and I don't want to go. Suit. To, I don't want to go to a Jets game and sit mm. shoulder to shoulder, mm. shoulder with somebody. So sports will be tough. It's it's going to be an interesting future, mm. uh, and I almost can't believe that we're in it. Yeah, you know, but <laughs> yeah. we are yeah. here. We are, and I don't want to be the guy who's lagging behind when we come out of it. Yeah. I want to be spearheading the the evolution, the revolution, mm. whatever you want to call it. And mm. I want Fit Club Media to be people's source for marketing yeah. and personal growth and how they're going to um, expand their business mm-hmm. when they come out of it. Yeah. So well, the one, th- the, the two things that we're able to do with the businesses, number one, when, <laughs> when businesses reopen and a lot of business owners are probably finding right now, like you said, okay, so you said the guy is now him. He's probably rolling dough. D- you yeah. know what I mean? He's probably Hands rolling sure. dough. And now his, his salaried staff who were just used to just organizing a team are now having to cut onions. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I mean? Like, this is a prep, guys. You know, even chefs don't even do that. Mm-hmm. Now it's like the business owner has now had to get down into the nitty-gritty. And I love it. Like, I love the grind, but I also understand. I love education. So that's where you're with, with Fit Club Media. When you get us, you get me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah. then I'm always going to make sure that we're always ahead of the curve. And so when the businesses reopen, what it, what Fit Club Media is going to allow businesses to do is to just do their business. Like, what is it in your business that you do and you can do it for eight hours? Then just do that. Let us handle this stuff that mm-hmm. you, your banner design. Like, this, these banner designs, like, do these go through? Let's talk banner design. Yeah. Like, just think about it right now. If you said, okay, Rick, RJ, I want to order a banner. Mm-hmm. We're going to say to you, okay, what do you want on that banner? Mm-hmm. And you're going to say, I don't know, my company name, maybe my website, website address. Email, yeah. Just the back. Just look at the backgrounds of these banners in yeah. themselves. The, the layouts, the yeah. graphics. That this are one. Involved. Use this one for example. This the, is the best. one. This is four hours of yeah. of artwork and layout, graphic time. Just to how many photos did that take, Jerome? <laughs> We're working with working with uh, actors and actresses. How 
That, that was wasn't a, a one and done, right? No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was, I mean, we, we took a lot of photos. Like, <laughs> yeah. it took like about maybe hours you know, there for half an hour. That's like, probably 100 photos to get the one. Yeah, like even that ADR banner. So, you know, that one we we were trying to relate it to the industry itself, and they love white bricks. So yeah. we found, you know, go and find a white brick ban- background. But you got to remember that as you're putting this together, you also have to make sure that the person who wants to buy it likes it. Yeah. So you're going back and forth. So yeah, that's all, all I'm saying is... Everything that we do, there's so much back end to it. Mm-hmm. And if you want to get, we'll discuss the video shooting in itself and the, and the amount of things that go into that is mm-hmm. incredible. And I remember one of, our, um, one of our customers or one of our clients actually said to me, how long does it take to shoot a one-minute video? <laughs> <laughs> Literally the most insulting thing that you can say to me <laughs> yeah. after yeah. I'm the guy that has to organize this whole yeah. thing. And you know who you are. You know who you are. Fabio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and to this day, dude, it sits right here. So yeah. just so you know, it, it takes a lot to do it, to do one video. But so let's tie it in. How, how can we help? How can Fit Club Media? What what is it that we do, and how can we help businesses? So we grow? we get them caught up with traditional marketing, right? And then we get them ahead of their competitors, mm-hmm. or if they don't have any competitors. And that's the thing is that people, I find that people get very arrogant in their business, yep. and they just when I talk to people, they just. They feel like they're above it all because they're busy, Mm -hmm. right? And Mm -hmm. I had a a great conversation with the guy, and he's now one of our sponsors, and he's busy. Like, he is busy, right? Because he's selling sanitary stuff, Mm -hmm. right? And when I had the conversation with with, with Roth, whatever, we'll just say his name, he... um, he was almost stuck, right? Right, and it was, he was fighting me a little bit, and I was like, "Dude, this is great! Like, you're the only one that's open. You're providing a service that people absolutely need." And he's like, "You know what, RJ? I'm already so busy." And I'm like, "Listen, I want to keep you busy, but I want to double the revenue that you're making per hour, mm-hmm. right? So imagine somebody you're making, you're making million dollars, yep. okay? Now imagine you put the same eight to twelve hours because that's what he told me. I'm doing twelve hour days, and I'm just like, okay. So to still do the ten to twelve hour days because it's obviously what you love. Mm-hmm. Like to tell me to stop working yeah. is you might as well just put me in a grave. Do you know what I mean? And yep. that's and Jerome's the same way. Jen's the same way. You're a little bit more relaxed than us, but we're like a personalities, mm-hmm. right? We always have to be working. We always have to do something. So you might as well just bury us if you're telling us to stay home, right, Jerome? <laughs> <laughs> that is correct, my friends. <laughs> Anyways, so what I was talking about, I said, listen, you still do the 10 to 12 hours. I just want to put more money in your pocket per hour. How does mm-hmm. that sound? Right? Yeah. And then he just, he, you know, he, and he, within a day, he got back to yeah, us. Like, we, we, we always have that challenge. Anytime we have our consultation meetings, people are always, for the most part, they're resistant mm-hmm. to social media. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's classic it's line. I'm, I'm already too baby. busy. I'm it's already too busy yeah, is what they say, yeah. which is a great problem to have, but you want to make sure that you're always too busy for yeah. the rest of your life. What about, yeah, what about, happens in cycles? How right? about this, though? How is your brand going to come out of this? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So are you marketing even at like, we're 50 bucks a month yeah. to get your banner so up let's talk it. pricing while you That's sent nothing. you that yeah. we design it you know we put the thing so 50 bucks a month we get you on the bottom and as you can see this is an hour show i've just seen jan reyes a hundred times yeah do you know what i mean plus you get mentioned right jan reyes mortgage specialist yeah there's so you're a, so you're looking plug. between the three yeah absolutely so and he works for rbc he's a mortgage specialist yeah. and this is a good time to go after that mortgage yes, because now be the mortgage, yeah so if you're looking to uh, purchase a house you need that mortgage talk to him yeah um, if you need a house, if you need a house, ADR properties, a right brand new there. house, brand new house. You yep. need to look for a, a house or buy a house. Anita Sharma and and Roz. Oh, there we go. What's Roz's last name? I forgot. Matos. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Actually, so, uh, we, I was with Matos uh, yesterday, filming a uh, filming a real estate uh, tour. Oh, yes. for, for 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 one of the her clients. See that? Mm. That's forward thinking individual. That's somebody that's yep. still going out on the grind. Somebody that's investing in her business you even bet. at a time when people can just sit back and relax and you know binge watch tiger king yeah <laughs> what do you what are you pointing at me that video do we have that image jerome why are you pointing at me <laughs> anybody knows what the tiger king <laughs> jerome's gonna pull up a photo before this chat is done okay tiger king's awesome let's just have a 10 second thing about tiger king okay, tell me about it what is all tiger about? king is, is white trash at its finest so it's if you're the type of person who is somewhat intellectual, it's very hard to get past the first 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. But once you kind of relax your brain a little <laughs> bit and just kind of go with the flow, you see the dynamics. Is this when that coach's strain kicks in? Or? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dynamic of this, just to see that uh, 
this world exists. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we all look at tigers and lions as like these things that are in, uh, you know, the African desert. Yeah. And if you fly there and jump on a Jeep, they'll take you through a tour and you might mm-hmm. see one if they decide to come out of the bushes. Mm-hmm. Tiger King, and I'm not going to get too much into it, but this guy bred tigers so that they could take little cubs, take them to the mall, and people mm. would pet them, right? Mm. Great. That's a good story. Mm. Um, actually, it's, it's an awful story, the way they ended up treating these tigers, and, and that's the unfortunate part about this show. Yeah. But the fact that that existed in yep. the United States is crazy. <laughs> and then, so it, if you watch the show, it ends up that this guy has like over 1,200 giant tigers. Oh, wow. So these things are all over the U.S. I didn't know that you could have a tiger as a as a pet. Like I thought you probably Mike can. Tyson can oh, yeah, that's right. or, you know, some Arab sheik might. Yeah. But I didn't realize that 1,200 people could actually have one. And you can. Can I you have can. one here at the house? You can't. I don't know. You might be able to. I don't know what the Canadian laws are. Look at look at Rick. Look at Rick over there. He has a tiger right there. (laughs) Pull up video. He's coming right away. um, But can you imagine having a thousand pound cat as a pet? I just think of poo. I just think of all my furniture. You got to kill a cow a day (laughs) to feed this thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. You're back, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let me give myself a little love for that uh, one. Like, that's a ton. Uh, like, who can afford this? It's just crazy. Like, you have to be a real eccentric individual. Anyways, I'll wrap it up. Besides that, there's also this ridiculous story between two personalities, yes. the Tiger King and this other lady. Yep. It all comes together, and it's, it's just nothing but a train wreck. And, uh, you know, I, I, I felt myself getting stupider and stupider watching this show. And I know I am because I'm now using the word stupider. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I realized that, you know, th- this is just mindless entertainment. And mm-hmm. I probably wouldn't pay attention to it if I wasn't quarantined. And so you got to let go. It. The point is, <laughs> we're looking for stuff to watch. Now is the time to put a message in front of people. Okay. So we want to see in the comments at some point in time, guys. Rick is going to monitor us for the next 24 hours. Do we want to have a discussion about Tiger King? Okay. So if yes, say yes, Tiger King. And I will watch it. Okay, I will binge watch it, and we will have a day of Tiger King next week. But I need at least 10 comments in there saying yes to Tiger King. And you have to be watching. I'm not joking. I'm not going to watch this, and nobody's watched this show. Okay, now, Don't you worry. Yeah, so I need 10. We're 10 is my to. magic number. We're also dressing up as the Tiger King. We're going to wear the wig. We're going to do the whole thing. We're going to come in here looking exactly like <laughs> We're all giving like each other haircuts. King. I need that shirt, that blue shirt. Yeah, I'll get, uh, just get my wife to cut your the hair. Only she thi- does exactly the oh, mohawk yeah. <laughs> mullets <laughs> without even trying. <laughs> can you uh, see my bald spot, Jerome? Uh, I can. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, wifey. Appreciate it. So the only thing that is attracting me to the show is the competitive. Like, I'm... Super competitive, and uh, this is not a light moment, but I'm super competitive, and I've realized that about myself over the yeah. past year or two mm-hmm. is that I can't help but look at competitor stuff, and I might I've talked trash. I'll you know what I'll I'll admit it. I've talked behind people's backs. Mm-hmm. It's you know what I mean. It's mm-hmm. just I talk trash. It's just like when I play sports, I'm trash talking you. It's no difference. If yeah. we're on the court and I was trash talking you, at the end you and me were going to shake hands. Of course. Do you Ball know busting. what I mean? Ball look at, what's his name? Um, the fighter guy. The from. Uh, Connor. Connor. Connor yeah. McGregor. Yeah. Everybody loves Connor, but everybody hates Connor, too. Yeah. Got right? it. And that's like, I see myself as a guy like that. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to talk to you, but I don't mean anything to you personally. Yeah. It's just how it's just how I get going in my head. Yeah. So if I'm talking trash about you, that's a good thing. Accept it. Embrace it. I know, like, our clients don't like that. You know, I'm not liked by everybody. I'm not endearing. I got mm-hmm. called that recently, and I get it, right? <laughs> but what you're going to get, like, you're going to come here, you're going to get a bomb ass workout. We're going to be professional, and I'm always going to have that cutting edge and i'm always going to have that little bit of uh, behind me and you so bet if i lose that uh, then that means that we're all losing of course nobody I, need, you don't want to have a vanilla person working well with, yeah you know? if you do that's re, that's that's that what they do yeah and uh and it's just not for me but so that's kind of my mentality yeah um okay let's continue to go you got one yes tiger king ashley kenny that's one rick <laughs> one out of ni- one out of ten, bruh. Ten percent. <laughs> All right. So I, I feel like we're going to be doing this for sure. Okay, for sure. So let's finish this up. So number yep. one, lead generation. Number two, lead nurturing. So how do you get those leads that that are now raising their hands? So that's what lead generation is. Mm-hmm. Yes, I want to know more. Mm-hmm. Number two is how do we say yes, I want to know more to getting them through your doors. Mm-hmm. Then number three is that how do you convert them from this to walking? to extracting value, dollars, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. that's number three. Then number four is your delivery, okay? So if I can, if we can generate people to raise their hand and if we can teach, like if you can 
train your staff mm -hmm. to nurture it. So like you said, engagement, that's mm -hmm. nurturing, okay? Mm -hmm. So if somebody posts on your Instagram and they say, hey, like, hey, what's all this about? And you don't reply, then you've lost the, the you second it. element. Yeah. Then when they come through the door, then you need to be able to tell them that, hey, I've got the value so that you're gonna give me the value of dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna pay me dollars for whatever it is that I can do for you. Then from there is like, you have to deliver on what you promise, mm -hmm. right? So there's a lot of people out there or businesses out there that like talk a big game, but there's absolutely no results. And in the end, that's what people want. If mm -hmm. I'm going to go to uh, Za Pizza Bistro and have a pizza and I go there and the pizza tastes like crap, it does like all that marketing. Yeah, you got me in there. You took my money, but you gave me something different. Yep, you got right? it. And I've had experiences like that, and you get buyer's remorse and you get regret, right? And then number three is that you need to have a resell. So, what is your retention of that customer? Mm -hmm. And like right now, our big focus, the pivoting point in our business here at Fit Club is retention, right? So, then we fix retention because that's what's going to continue to let us do what we're doing. At the same time, I'm building up the lead generation. So as everybody seed, we're doing 14 days of free premium access where they get seven days workout, plus it provides a meal plan, plus the accountability and the support. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, um, and so like that's the pipeline, but we're making it very exclusive just to one to three people a day, right? Right, Because we don't want to oversaturate and get away from what our focus is right now is retention. And so those are the five elements of the business. Yeah. Where do we fit in as Fit Club Media is that we're gonna be able to help you with number one and number two. Right. We can't help you with your sales unless you want to hire us to go and sit there and do your sales. Mm -hmm. Right. We can do that. I mean, we got a phone team. Mm -hmm. Right. We can get you Rick in there. And just this is what we do. Tell me five things about your business. No problem. I'm on it. Yeah. Right. That's what we do well. Yeah. Right. And what I do well is, OK, well, Rick, what you do well, I need to put it to pen to paper. I need to make it visible. I need to simplify it. And then I need to train. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to train your managers, and that's what we do here with my team is that, okay, let's put this together. Let's make this a repeatable system. Then let's practice it together, mm -hmm. and now go and train your team. Good. So uh, let's just talk about the first step and how it relates okay. directly to us, yeah. okay? So what we would offer your company is this. Number one, we create your video content for your business, meaning that we come in there, we shoot your killer video, okay? So that's the first thing. Number two is we're going to promote your business on our social media platform. So if you want to become part of our world, okay, forget about your own social media platform at this point. We have uh, almost 30,000 followers that watch what we do. So we can already give you an audience. So in addition to the content, we'll put you in front of an audience. In addition to that, as you can see, obviously the podcast, you can see the banners that are running, rolling underneath. We have Nary's Kitchen, we have the podcast, we have the workouts where we are going to promote your company through those banners on, the, on, the, uh, on your screen as well as the banners right over here. In addition to that, we can help you create the banners that become the backdrop of, mm -hmm. our, of our podcasts and of our, and of our workouts. So in addition, so I'm just giving you, the, just so you know what we do here, um, we can also put product placement. So mm -hmm. if you have a product that you wanted to promote, we can do that for you. Preferably food. We prefer food <laughs> to the next point, which would be product reviews. Yes. So if you have a, a line of something, if you mm -hmm. wanted, let's just say you had a, a meal prep business and mm -hmm. you wanted to bring us five different things, we will do a, a, a review on that. We'll give you an honest opinion. Mm -hmm. Um, but the one thing that we don't do is we don't uh, BS anybody. So if your no. product sucks, you, yes. they're going to know it does. So make sure you're bringing us the best of your best because that's, that's the only way that we're going to be able to translate it to our audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agree. So that's it. So that's what Fit Club Media can do. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I think we're good, man. I think Sh we got. Should we go hit the town in these suits or what? I think that, yeah, we're going to go hit the town. Me and we're going to go walk <laughs> around the block. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. We're going to go to sure. No Frills. Yeah, we're going to go to No Frills and stand in line. I wonder what people would think if we rolled in there with the suits. What's that? You know what you should do, babe? You should re wear a dress and we'll just flank you like we're Secret Service. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can make that happen. All right, guys, let's end this. All right, show. Thanks, ever thanks everybody for paying attention, RJ. Appreciate the knowledge. JJ Rome. Hell yeah, buddy. Dance it out, Jerome. Yeah. Timing was a little off on that one. <laughs> <laughs> you got to nail your.